content security policy has several reporting features that are very useful for letting the development team know when one of the policies has fired. This is an underrated part of content security policy. Effectively, it lets the development team have the browsers used by their users report back when there's a problem. So if one of the policies fires off, it's an indication that there's something wrong that some way to attack the application. And it's great for the development team to be able to get notice of this so they can double check that they've installed all their primary security controls and they followed all the best practices for the page that is reporting the content security policy violations. There's two different mechanisms used to report violations, report URI and report two. As of the date this video was made, report URI is supported by the browsers, but ironically is not actually the current method that is supposed to be used. The report to has replaced report URI mechanism. It's only supported by Chrome right now. The report URI is very simple. Essentially, the place that the message is going to be sent to is declared in the report URI directive. And that can be in the same or a different domain. It can be a page in the site or a page in another site. We can take a look at this report URI in action. Here on our content security policy test page, we have the report URI declared as going to a local page, the capture data page. Normally the endpoint would be an endpoint out on the web, but in this demo, we're just using the capture data page. So we'll create a policy violation. We can do that with a script injection. So we inject the script. We can verify that there was a violation looking in the web console. We see that the browser is reporting the problem. So we'll go over to the capture data page. And we can see the violation has been reported. The report to works slightly differently. Instead of having a single endpoint, it allows you to specify a series of endpoints and these endpoints can be grouped together into groups and the groups are given names. So in this directive, we specify which URLs belong to which groups. That establishes the groups of URLs. Then in the actual content security policy, we use the report to, to specify which group to call from this particular page. So the groups are established by the report to HTTP response header, and the group is called using the report to lowercase directive within the content security policy header. So you'll end up seeing two different headers, one to put together the groups and the other to call the group. So back on our test page, we see the report to header here, and it's establishing a group whose name is CSP dash endpoint. And that group points to just one endpoint, capturedata.php. Down in the content security policy, see the report to directive, and it says to send the information to all the URLs within the CSP dash endpoint group. So the violation detection works as the same as before, and the data will end up being reported to the same place since we happen to specify the same endpoints in both of our headers. And it's just a matter of which one of these headers 
the browser will pay attention to. And it's perfectly safe to declare both the report URI and the report to directives. They do not step on each other. The browser will use the one that it prefers. If the browser doesn't support report to yet, it'll use report URI. If it has support for report to, it'll prefer that over report URI. Either way, you're covered. The information contained in the violation report includes several pieces of information. It's very handy for developers, including the location of the problem, the exact page that it occurred on, and which directive was violated. And it'll also include in the report the policy as it was set at that time in the browser. So if the policy changes over time, the developer has a copy of the policy as it appeared in that browser at the time the violation occurred. It won't be confused with any changes that have been made in the policy since then. So overall, content security policy has a learning curve and some development challenges associated with it. The biggest one being that we have to write best practice code in order to take advantage of content security policy. But content security policy has significant advantages. It provides a lot of defense in depth to cover an application in case the application either forgot to implement the primary controls, didn't know that they were supposed to, or didn't implement the controls correctly. It also has a great reporting feature that notifies the developer when policy violations occur, giving the development team an opportunity to verify that all of the primary security controls are in place. 